Parshas B'Shalach Daf Kuf Kuf Ches Ois Beis. The Medrash says, "By Yivarech Lekim Asiyem Ashvi, Hashem blessed the day of Shabbos with what? The Mai Baruch Hu Baruch Hu B'Mon." So the Nesiv Shalom has two questions. Question number one: Mon only happened for forty years. The blessing by Yivarech Lekim Asiyem Ashvi is forever, eternal. So how does it make sense to say that the blessing of Shabbos, which is for eternity, for our days also? has a, bar, a bracha of man. What does it have to do with man? Man was only for the time we were in the Midbar. And the second question that he asks is that the bracha of Shabbos was the blessing of man. Shabbos didn't get man. The whole blessing of Shabbos, of the man, was that it didn't fall. What happened? Two portions fall on Friday. No portions of the man fell on Shabbos. So what does it mean that Shabbos is blessed with man? A, that was only for 40 years, L'chaira. And B, what do you mean Shabbos was blessed with Mun? Mun didn't fall on Shabbos. What kind of blessing is that? The blessing that it didn't fall? So he explains beautiful Alderech according to the way that we understand something else. In Priya Aretz from Mirabendel of Atapska, it says a beautiful Pshat. The grumblers that were in Klal Yisrael, his Avu Taiva, they had a Taiva. What does it mean, his Avu Taiva? It should say, they, it means they had a want for Taiva. Everything that we eat goes into the dam of the nefesh, and therefore it is ma'ir taiva. Whatever that means, above our pay grade to understand, but food in food is an injection of taiva. Probably that's why we see tzaddikim, they eat very, very little. You look at what Rav Steinman Zatzal ate, I'm sure it couldn't be or any taiva. We lost our appetite just looking at it. But they weren't into food. People say, what's wrong with being into food? In a way, for us, it's fine. You know, it, there are much worse problems. But the facts that we can't uh, change are the facts of the Bria, that the more that we ingest of, of super delicious food, that is the entryway, it's hard to believe, but that is the entryway of taiva. The proof is that the man was called lechem abirim, it was holy food, and therefore it didn't awaken any taiva inside of us. So even though we were sustained through eating the man, so that sustained our guf, it didn't give any taiva because it was holy food. Holy food does not produce taiva in a person. That's what he's saying based on the medrash, this is the way the world was created, this is what we believe. He's giving us a little insight. It's hard when you, when you don't grow up like this. You, we don't know really what makes things work. He's telling you that the energy that you have to sin, to have taiva, comes from somewhere. We thought it just comes down. It comes from being fueled by food. And the raya is that when they ate heavenly food, they did not have materialistic taiva. The Zeh Pirish, this is what it says in Priya Ar. It's a Nez Pshat Hisavu Taiva. Shehem his avu l'taivas. They had a taiva for a taiva. They didn't actually have taiva, but they felt we miss having a taiva. We wish that we had a taiva. Whether it was l'shem shemayim or not is a different story, but it's a beautiful vart. It explains the word. His avu his avu taiva. They had a taiva to have a taiva. Because they didn't have ta- the, the taiva that comes from Achila, they didn't have any taivas. And they wanted to have, they missed having a taiva. They were his avu taiva, l'chaim bikshu. That's why they asked, mi'ichilenu basar. Fine, we have man, but we want basar. Why? L'ayr bahem This makes a lot of sense. They asked for basar. Well, what did Afghanin meet for? The Territ says they were being sustained fine through the man. But the man was holy food, and they, they weren't feeling any taiva. They wanted taiva, again, different discussion, why? We, it says that it was because they wanted schar for being kaivish to taiva. They didn't want a freebie, just like the Hashem didn't put us down here for freebies and He gave us a lot of nisyanis for our benefit. They wanted the same thing. They wanted taiva for our benefit and why it was wrong and why it was right. That's a different discussion. They wanted taiva, so they asked for basar. Enough of this heavenly stuff. Give us good old fashioned steak and then we will again have taiva inside of us. Now that we understand this, says the Nesiva Shalom, we can understand 
the medrash of Ayvarch Elokim Esiyam Eshvi Baruchu B'man. Ze'abracha Shibirch Elokim Esiyam Eshvi. This is the bracha that Hashem gave Shabbos. Habracha Shel Hamon. She'enoi Mo'ireres Taivos. That's the bracha. Ayvarch Elokim Esiyam Eshvi. B'may Baruchu B'man. With the same concept of man. Just like when we ate man, it didn't create taiva inside of us. So too, the achila of Shabbos that we eat, the food that we eat on Shabbos, people say you don't gain weight. And I'm not sure about that. But it doesn't cause your system to create taiva. al now we can understand. Holy it is for you, Shabbos the Queen. So he says, Kaidashi Lachem. Even the things that are Nyani Lachem, Machali Shabbos, the things that you do for yourself, Kaidashi on Shabbos Amalka. They have Kedusha Elois, Sha'inim Oirim Taivas. Mizem Masha Oimim, Askin Sudasa the Malka, the Ainu Shasudish Shabbos, Kaidish Kadashim, Sudasa the Malka, it is a fixing of a of a meal fit for a king. It is the meals that we're eating is for the king. We're eating a king's meal, the king of Melech Machei Allah HaMakadosh Baruch Hu. So even though we're doing the same thing as we're doing during the week, we're eating food, and it's supposed to cause that, but it's holy food. Holy food like the man. The my Baruch Hu Baruch Hu Baman with the same idea that it's not Ma'oyer Taivis. V'zeh Amnam Baruch HaGadayla Ma'oyed. V'zeh Baruch It is a truly great Baruch the food we're going to eat on Shabbos, and we eat usually a lot of it, is not Mo'ir Taiva, and it's also a bracha nitzchis. Now it makes sense. It wasn't just saying of those 40 years. Oid Marumas Be'inyin Baruch Baman is a different Inyan. And I want to say how proud I am. I used to learn the Siva Shalom with my children every Shabbos when they were little. And I asked this kasha of the Medrash at the Shabbos table, the Siva Shalom's kasha was, the Medrash says, Ve'varcha l'kim m'sheim ha'shvi, b'may baruchu, baruchu b'man. But man is not eternal. Man is not now. What does Shabbos have to do with man? And right away, my little princess Mindy raised her hand. I don't remember how old she was. I think it was nine or ten. Certainly under bas mitzvah. Right away her hand went up. Yes. And she said the following. She said, just like man, the person was able to imagine whatever they wanted it to be, and that became their reality. The rich person imagined steak, the poor person imagined steak, and all of a sudden his reality was steak. So too Shabbos. Whether you're a big tzaddik that you can experience Shabbos on a high level, or you're a low person during the week, you're struggling, but on Shabbos you can imagine that you're on the highest level and that becomes your reality. How beautiful. And then years later I found it Actually, in the Nesiva Shalom, the Nesiva Shalom says the same thing. Baruch Shekivanta, Baruch Hashem, that Mindy was Machavant in the Nesiva Shalom. Apimadi Isa Bechazal Shekol Echot Toam Tamoy Shalamon, every person experienced the flavor, the taste of the mon, Lufi Masha Hoyim Machavant, Lutoim Boy, according to his Kavona. Zeshe Yedu Lechavant, Lamadani Melochim, Toam Boy Tam Tanuge Melochim. Person who knew what uh, five hundred dollar steak was, he knew what to what to think of. That's what became his reality. Somebody who only knew PB and J, so they was they were eating uh, peanut butter and jelly or pizza. That's what it means. The Shabbos has a bracha of man. That blessing that man had to be able to become whatever. You thought, and, and that became your experience. That also happens on Shabbos Kodesh. Person who looks at Shabbos, it's a day that I sleep, a bagel, it's a day of rest, a day I don't have to go to work, a day I could chill, I could eat to my heart's content, and it's a very low level of spirituality. He experiences Yoy Menucha. But somebody who realizes this is my day, that Hashem says, you don't have to work today. You don't have to have Bilbal Adas. You don't have to be on your compute, computer and your phone. This is the day that you can be the best Jew that you can be. You can learn extra. You can sing to me. You can bond with me. 
on the highest level, then that's what it becomes. And someone who's der hoibin, and he imagines the highest levels, that's what he's zoicha in that way. You can imagine what you want. You can't do that on Monday. Monday is going to be Monday. You learn, you learn, you eat, you eat, you go to work, you go to work. You can't have a different experience. Shabbos could be like a camouflage. Shabbos is up to you to do with it as you wish. It could be a day of rest. You're, you don't have to go to work. You go to shul, you daven, you relax, you come home, you have a delicious fat meal, you fall asleep at the, at the suda. It's a beautiful thing. You never have that the rest of the week. Nobody's on their phones. You can bond, maybe play a game. You could sleep. Like somebody said, Nebuch, Rabbi Alavsky says, he says, someone told him, Shabbos is awesome. It's like you're dead. You could sleep till you drools on the pillow until you could sleep. That's why Hashem gave Shabbos. But to some people, that's their experience. A day off. A day off, a day without technology. You can tap maybe into yourself a little bit and get a little bit calm. And Okay, that's the lowest level. But you could also do so much more with Shabbos and, and, and use it as it was meant to be given. Beautiful chat that he says about Shabbos. He brings it down also in Chelek Beis on Shabbos. Shabbos is blessed Mikol HaYomim. Bekidash and it's more holy Mikol HaZmanim. There's Yomim and there's Manim. It's so interesting. Sometimes we see a Chazal and we don't think, you know, it's, we think it's just flowery, flowery words. But no, it says Yomim and it says Manim on purpose. During the course of our year, we have days that are called Yomim. Yom HaZikaroin, Yom HaKippurim, he doesn't talk about Yom HaShoah. He doesn't talk about that, Yom HaZikaron. But he talks about Yom, Yom HaZikaron, Rosh Hashanah, and Yom HaKippurim. And there's days, there's Chagim, they're called Chagim Zmanim Lusasin. Zman Cheiruseinu. Zman Matan Teiruseinu. Zman Simchaseinu. Isn't that interesting? Shabbos, you find all the brachas of the Yomim, of Yom HaZikaron and Yom, Yom Trua Yelechem, that's also Rosh Hashanah. And Shabbos, you find the brachas of all those manim. You can tap into everything, all of the benefits of every yontif. You can tap in on Shabbos according to your kavana and your will. Shabbos is the root, the essence of all blessing. Bracha, bilti mugbelas, unlimited brachas. Benachla, belimitzarim. Enachla, an inheritance without any metzar, without any boundaries. It all depends on your kavana of what you want to get out of Shabbos Kodesh. Shabbos is blessed more than the Yomim Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. It's more holy than all those manim.